What's going on guys? Dan with PC Tech Hustle coming at you with another video and today I got for you guys a $1,300 build that's got no video card whatsoever. So what in the heck am I up to? Well more on that in just a moment and that's coming at you guys right now. So I guess while I have you guys' attention here, I might as well explain myself. Well, right here what we have here is a build that's what I'm calling a prep build for the new latest and greatest video cards from AMD and NVIDIA. I have a client who is particularly interested in getting one of those, however, obviously, as we all know, they're really, really hard to find. So the client has an older rig that I put together for them a while back and they're wanting to do some upgrades. So we definitely can make some upgrades now in a system, but obviously we're gonna have to wait to get our hands on some of those new video cards. So what do we have here on the table? Well, basically we have a build that's of some of the most top tier parts that you can buy on the market right now, minus the video card, of course. But the idea behind that is to position us to have the hardware compatibility and support to get off to the races with one of those new top tier video cards. So that's basically the discussion I have with the client being that, hey, I'm gonna get you a PC built up that'll obviously be able to support your existing video card, which is of lower tier compared to some of this hardware. But when the time comes and you're able to get your hands on some of those top tier graphics cards, you have nothing to worry about other than just pulling out the old and putting in the new. So I figured that'd make for a pretty good content piece for the channel of being that where people maybe already have really good hardware that would support those video cards, they just simply can't get their hands on it. Or doing what we are doing here, being a build that would easily be able to support one of those new video cards. So with all that said, let's just uh, quickly talk about the parts that we have here on the table and their function in this build. Alrighty guys, so let's talk about the processor first here being the Ryzen 7 3700X. This is an eight core 16 thread processor. No, it's not the top tier line processors that you can get nowadays, even through the ones that are available, but we didn't want to spend a ton of money because we knew that down the line, we might be upgrading to a Ryzen 5000. So it felt like this was a good middle ground. We didn't spend a lot of money. We have plenty of cores and threads and performance here within this CPU to get the job done. Alrighty, to cool our 3700X, even though it does come included with a stock cooler, we elected to go with a much nicer, much higher end cooler from Corsair, being the H115i Capellix RGB, basically one of the best coolers you can buy on the market. So we should have no problems keeping temperatures under control and basically have some of the best cooling options you can put minus a you know custom water loop. All right, so next part we have here being the motherboard to support our CPU, and that is the Gigabyte Aorus B550 Elite AX. The great thing about this motherboard here that we were aiming for was the Ryzen 3000 capability support right out of the box, so we will just be a plug and play, as well as has some great features being AX, which as you can see in the naming convention, supports Wi-Fi 6, as well as it has a 2.5 gigabit LAN, 12 plus two phase VRM, PCIe Gen 4 capable, as well as with a BIOS update, it'll be able to support Ryzen 5000 when we elect to do that in the future. Next part we have here being the memory, which we have is a pretty stout kit of Trident Z Neo RGB memory. This is 32 gigs, 3600 megahertz, cast latency 16. Now I know what you're thinking, yeah, that's complete overkill for a gaming rig. I'd agree, but we really were just after populating all those memory slots as well as with 32 gigs, we basically have nothing to worry about in the future. For storage, really, there isn't a whole lot to say here other than because we are building a gaming PC. We didn't have to get super flashy or high end. So what we got here is a P1 from Crucial. It's a one terabyte NVMe SSD should be plenty of space to get us installed with the operating system as well as several other games and plenty of extra space to grow into in the future. All right, and for power supply here, really there isn't a whole lot to talk about with power supplies because a power supply really is just a power supply. But what we have here is a Corsair RM850X. A couple things here with this one is we wanted to get an 80 plus gold certified supply, which this is a plus being that it is modular, fully modular. And though the main thing being 850 watts in our power budget to be able to support some of those top tier graphics cards. All right, so last part we have here on the list, which is the case which we have here is a Corsair 4000X RGB tempered glass edition. No particular reason why we went directly with this case. Actually, honestly, it was just a case I picked out for the client because they have a previous Corsair case. And so I wanted to kind of continue the Corsair theme as you kind of see what's going on here already. But the cool thing about this case is honestly, I think it's probably one of the best looking cases Corsair has came out with in a while. I like the tempered glass up front with the triple SP120 fans, as well as we're going to add a fourth one out back that'll help illuminate the build in the back side of the case. But overall, the build quality of this case is 
top notch. Corsair makes great things. So I think this will set us up well for housing these parts and getting this build off to the races. Alrighty guys, so that covers all the parts in full. And I'd have to say, I think we have a very, very solid foundation for a great gaming PC once we can get our hands on one of those top tier graphics cards. But in the meantime, we're gonna have a really good setup. So let's cut over to a quick little build montage. We're gonna throw all these parts together, get this build all nice and set up and have some concluding final thoughts afterwards. Alrighty guys, build complete. And before we do a quick first power on, I just wanna quickly say that there's a couple things that we did here and let you know about them. But one being the cable management, obviously I didn't really cover that in the build montage and I'll cut to some B-roll here so you can see what I'm talking about. But I didn't think that was super compelling and fun for you guys to watch just because cables are not really all that fun to watch. And because this thing's got a lot of RGB going on, it has a lot of cables to deal with though. Corsair makes it nice and easy. And I'd say overall this case is pretty awesome for cable management. A little tight for what we're doing, but does get the job done and we got everything Thing all nice and buttoned up. Last thing there you also saw before we cut over to this scene being that we installed a really basic looking video card mainly because honestly you know we don't have one but since this build was not really intended to have a video card anyway that's really just there so we can get some display out and see if everything is okay before we give it to the client. Without further ado then let's just go power the sucker on and see if we get a post and off to the races hopefully we go. So here we go. Flipping on the power on the back. 
and I got my keyboard here off to the side I'll put it up here on top of the case here so we can see what I'm doing and three two one power on I've got nothing wait well this is why we do these tests so might not have a front panel connection all the way connected. I'm gonna go double check on that. All right, so let's try this one more time. I think I might've had the power cable actually plugged into the wrong spot. So we are going to plug in the power cable again in the back, flipped on, power on the monitor, good. Three, two, one. Oh yes, there we go, there we go. Okay, fan spinning. Should just immediately get into BIOS because we don't have an OS. So let's see here. Might be taking a second with memory training. Giving it a sec. Come on, baby. All right, there we go. Yep, that just took a sec. So usually with a first power on like that, you you end up having to do some memory training and it kind of takes a second. I was starting to get a little nervous there, but all right, so that's just telling us we need to enter setup or whatever and reboot. Let's hit our reset switch real quick. So that's a good test. Our reset switch is working as well. And we should be getting into BIOS here. I'll just make sure we can. It's hitting the delete key at this point. Come on, baby. There we go. Perfect. Alrighty guys, so then first power on, complete and tested, and we are obviously looking really good. And honestly, what else can be said other than, well, I really haven't actually taken a good look at this system, actually. Let me see here from the front. Oh yeah, that looks sweet. And I definitely love the Capellix LEDs on that cooler. Pretty much no cooler looks that good, I think, on the market. Maybe minus the Oris cooler. I like the Oris stuff too, but anyway, so what else can be said here? Honestly, this video wasn't intended to be a, you know, benchmarking build, it, you know, maybe a build guide, but at the same time, obviously we are missing a key component that I don't want to say is a complete build guide, but at least a guide that allows you guys to see you know, what could be a good system that is going to enable you and support you to be able to put in one of those top tier graphics cards like this client is doing. So all in all, I think the client is gonna be pretty happy with this build. Obviously we are transitioning them to a very much more powerful system and they'll be able to at least in the meantime take their video card that they have now in the current system and slap it in here and at least get to gaming and then down the line when we can find one of those NVIDIA 3000 or AMD 6000 cards, we're gonna slap it in here. But aside from all that guys, make sure you do the YouTube thing, right? Give me a like if you enjoyed this content and let me know in the comments, did I make some sound hardware decisions to enable my client to have a PC that'll be ready for one of those top tier graphics cards? I like to think I did. Obviously we could have spent some more money in some other areas, but again, like I said, I didn't want to needlessly spend knowing that we'll probably eventually upgrade to an AMD 5000 series CPU, as well as, you know, obviously the video card that's to come. And don't forget, if you guys enjoyed this content, then I got a couple more videos of mine for you guys to go check out. Let me know what you think about those. But other than that, if you guys stuck with the video this long, then I'd like to say thanks for tuning into this one. I appreciate your time and I'll catch you guys in the next one.